Jesus walked into Dr. Sharon Nesbitt's room and spoke words that would transform her life forever and catapult her into a revelation that empowered her to walk in signs, wonders, miracles, even raising the dead, ensuring that you know how to line up with God's times and seasons. You don't want to miss this show. Well, Larry Sparks here. We're diving right on in with my guest, the amazing Dr. Sharon Nesbitt. The, you're carrying a word right now that you know it's 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 interesting i've heard this i've heard this phrase god is not about you know out with the old and in with the new but more so it's out with the old in with the even older in with the ancient in with that which worked for people like abraham and enoch and the great patriarchs of old and i really believe dr sharon you have provided a resource this book about accessing the ancient portals that i believe is a game changer for everyday believers so dr sharon wh wh where did you first really access this revelation get this revelation of the ancient portals well, I grew up in church. Thank you so much for having us, Larry. Uh, yes. I grew up church all my life, I, um, but didn't have a real encounter with God. Jesus walked in my room uh, when I was about 19, 20, and um, it told me I would go around the world preaching his gospel and, and bringing healing to his people. But one of the things he told me was I was going to teach the Hebraic roots. Now I had to start deviling into understanding times and seasons and how did the supernatural operate because he said we would operate by the supernatural and start looking at what happened to Enoch, what happened to Samson and those who carry the technology of the supernatural. And I began to see a constant a uh, revelation of gateways, portals, dimensions, and realms where they operated in. And I began to really delve into it. And it wasn't about 20 some years later, I was able, God said, now it's time for you to put it in a book. So we've been teaching it for about 25 years. And we finally said, it's time for it to go into the book. Well, I want to ask you, I mean, that that to me is extremely intriguing, this idea of supernatural or spiritual technology, because obviously right now the world is focusing on all manner of technological increase and things from transhumanism, artificial intelligence, some of it's good, some of it's interesting. But when it comes to supernatural or spiritual technology, what, what are some of those? What are some of the spiritual technologies that we've received in the Holy Spirit? Well, one of the things you look at, if you look at the whole life of Yeshua, Jesus, his whole message was demonstration and manifestation, you know, walking through the walls, walking on water. We've seen the dead raised literally in our ministry, limbs grow, creative miracles. Those are technologies whereby we use uh, the Bible says in Second Corinthians that we have things called gifts, gifts of healing, the miracles. We, we look at prophecy, words of knowledge. We should be a peculiar people. We should be those who stand out with the technologies of God. Now we're created in his image and after his likeness, God never wanted us to be religious. He never wanted us to be in the trap of normalcy or ordinary. We're supposed to stick out. And in John, he says, John 12, we should do greater works than what Jesus did. Now, somebody may say that was in quantity or in quality. I believe it was both that we should do greater works because we carry the technology of the same Holy Ghost. Oh, I love that. The same Holy Ghost that Jesus had when he walked on the water is the same Holy Ghost we have. The same Holy Ghost that Jesus had when the man at the pool of Bethesda got up is the same Holy Ghost. We have diminished the spirit to just a goosebump and speaking in tongues and not demonstrating the power of the kingdom of God. As you're saying that, I feel the presence of the Lord because honestly, I think of what Paul reminds us in Romans 8. In fact, that we have been filled with the spirit of resurrection. The yes. one who raised Jesus from the dead. That's just not an idea or a concept. And like you said, it's not for a goosebump. And, oh, I spoke in tongues you know, 20 years ago at a charismatic youth camp. Yeah. It's This is who lives inside the same 
Holy Ghost. Now, I got to pause because you talked about some of the miracles that you're seeing in your ministry. And, and you just noted people being raised from the dead or limbs growing out. Can you share some of those miracles, one or two, maybe that the Holy Spirit highlights? Because that will provoke people that will that will stir hunger in people. Yeah. To access an ancient portals, one of the things that Jesus said, raise the dead, heal the sick. And um, when I was 18, my mom died. When I was 21, my dad died. I was angry at God. And I, and the day Jesus walked in my room, I said, if you're real, show me. Because until you have a real encounter with God, you really don't understand uh, the level of intimacy you can have with God. This young lady, um, I was in the hospital. They flew in all kinds of specialists from Europe and everywhere to diagnose her case. Nobody could diagnose it. And um, no hospital wanted to take her because they didn't want the liability. Now, we're in Arkansas. Three states said no. Uh, Arkansas, Missouri, um, Arkansas, Mississippi, Texas uh, said no. But Missouri said yes. A Jewish hospital in Missouri said yes, but the doctors had a bleak diagnosis. They said she may not live for the next 24 hours. I get in the car and go, and the Lord says, raise her up. She slips out of her body, goes on to the other side, sees the light, sees loved ones, and um, by the time I get there, I grab her feet and I said, you come back in the name of Jesus, I command the power of resurrection to hit your body and you come back on this side. She said she heard my body, my voice in another dimension, came back through a portal and got back in her body. It is documented that she died for several minutes and came back as a result of us believing and decreeing the, the, the word of God. There was a lady, we were in Missouri at a Pastor Kemp, Apostle Kemp, Tony Kemp's church, and uh, uh, her leg grew out uh, several inches. And uh, so Jesus said our ministry would be marked by the supernatural. Larry, because of AI and all the technology of robots, don't you think that God would give us the technology to be superior to any demeaning uh, technology that the enemy would come up with? So we are the sons of God. We are the sons and we have a higher technology than any AI, than any robot, than any alien. And I really believe that God is calling us to a place of transformation and healing. That's absolutely true. And again, it goes back to what you're saying, the same Holy Ghost, the same Holy Spirit. And again, what you talk about in the book is really, I mean, it's right there in the title, ancient. I, I think in our modern society, we feel like we need something new or upgraded or contemporary or relevant. And sadly, sometimes that infiltrates the church. But in this book, you are talking about some of these ancient portals, ancient foundations, ancient cornerstones to really living the supernatural life and really connecting with the Hebraic scriptures. So, yeah. I mean, just what are some of these ancient portals and practices um, that we really need to focus on today in our 21st century world. Yes. Well, when we look at the concept, we look at every day, we have portals, which is gateways, entry points to the supernatural. We have one every day in what we call the eight watches. And the Bible mm. says that Jesus came on in the watch. He walking on the water in the third watch. And so when I begin to look at it, I begin to say that every day has a portal through the eight watches. For instance, six to nine, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. is the first watch, which the evening to the morning is the first day. That means that you start decreeing what you want to see in your day. Even though we say the day doesn't end to 12 uh, p.m. or 12 a.m., the Bible says that the day starts at 6 p.m. So every day you have a portal that you can enter in and access things from heaven. Every week you have a portal. It's called the Shabbat or the Sabbath. The Bible says that it is the only day that God blessed and he blessed the seventh day. It is the Sabbath of rest. This is where we get replenishing. This is where we get strategies. It is the Sabbath rest. And then every month, 
we have a portal called Rosh Kadesh, which is the head of every month. It is the first or the beginning on the Hebraic. Now we go by the Gregorian calendar, but on the Hebraic calendar, these are entry points where we can enter in. And it gives us every month is aligned to a constellation. Every month has a body part, a tribe, a stone. And we look at that and we're able now to forecast what's going to happen that month or look at what is demonically inclined or assigned to that month so we'll know how to overcome. And then every year we have portals with the seventh feast of God, which is the holy days. That means in the spring we have Passover, which is Pesach, we have Passover is when Jesus died. Unleavened bread is when he was buried. First fruit is when he got up. And then we have something called Pentecost, which is the giving of the Holy Spirit, Shaviot, which is uh, our the day of Pentecost, the giving of the Holy Spirit. And that's where we get our power and our authority. And then we have, which has all been fulfilled, then we have the three fall feast, which we're about to go right into it, which is the Feast of Trumpet, which is Rosh Hashanah, which is the head of the year. Now, I know in January, come on, we think that is the head of the year. But on God's calendar, when we celebrate Rosh Hashanah, it is the head of the year. And that's when we're able to enter into certain seasons and cycles. Then we go into Yom Kippur, which is the high holy day, the highest holy day According to Leviticus 23, Exodus 12, we have these holy days. And then the last one is tabernacle, when we're going to tabernacle with him. And so if you can see the parallels that every day we have a portal we can enter in. Every week, which is Shabbat, every year is the feast. And we can enter into those and extract power, glory. The Bible says there are seven blessings to those who celebrate the feast. That means there are impartations, things like you're going to live a long life, that God is going to let your fruit come in his season, that supernatural things begin to happen. And I can tell you, Larry, that as we have celebrated the feast, we have seen supernatural things in our ministry. Uh, God has just done amazing things where we extract and transfer. The Bible says in John 5, Jesus walks up to a man at the pool of Bethesda and he says, do you want to be made whole? He said, yes. But every time the angel comes down and trouble the water, I have no one to come in. That means there is a portal that opens up where angels come down at a certain season. Why did that have to stop? We are in the season where we have to access these dimensions and these portals. When, when, when Abraham went on Mount Sinai, that was a portal. When Moses went up, it was a port. Abraham went on Mount Moriah. Uh, Moses went on Mount Sinai. These were portals, places of transaction. That means we can find the high places. We can find the access points and go back in and retrieve the power, the anointing that the Father has for us. That's the reason we wrote this book for portals, for you to revisit, to access the dimensions that God has given us through these ancient portals. Dr. Sherrod, let me ask you this question because I, I agree. In fact, the Old Testament tells us that there would be a blessing for those who celebrate the feast. But furthermore, it talks about celebrating the feast or honoring them forever. Yes. That's, that, that language is there. It doesn't say, but when the Messiah comes, things are going to shift. It doesn't say when the Messiah comes, you're going to stop doing this. I understand that things have changed with the old to new covenant. But what would you say to the person who's saying, well, we are living under the new covenant. We're in the New Testament, etc." cetera. Um, what, what relationship should we have with the feasts and the watches and these Hebraic times and seasons? Because Jesus kept them. And the Bible mm. said that we were grafted in. We have several families who have adopted uh, children here at our church. What I found out, Larry, is the children don't come into the family and tell the parents what to do. 
the children come in and whatever the family is doing, they they adopt to whatever the family is doing. Jesus kept the feast. And the Bible says that Jesus, we will keep the feast even in the next life, that the feast will be, why? Because they are portals, they are rams and dimensions that God has given us. Jesus said, I didn't come to do away with the law, but to fulfill it. And we're in the fulfillment of the law and we don't do away with it either. We just come to fulfill it just like Jesus, just Yeshua did. Amen. Amen. And well, again, the book Accessing Ancient Portals is available. It's so exciting because I know Sid Roth is having you on for that. But yeah. that that is a timely word that is needed right now. And just just as some final encouragement to those who are watching, why would you say that people need to be aware of these ancient portals, whether it's the feasts, the watches, etc. What what ultimate blessing will it provide in their lives? I know there's many, but mm -hmm. when it comes to the times and seasons of God, how does that help us align with what God's doing? Number one, it brings you to a more intimate relationship with God. We don't want to do anything just because we get the blessings. What it does is it teaches us how Father wants to have an appointment. The more deems, these are appointed times when we meet the Father. We understand more about the Father. We put away side and we bring ourselves to a place of humility where I want to know more about the Father. So number one, it gives us that place of intimacy. Number two, it gives you that power. Then you're able to discern the times and the season, and you won't be uh, uh, obliterated by Satan's tactics, won't be ignorant of Satan's devices, because we'll know when he's coming, we'll be able to discern the times and the seasons, and then you'll be empowered to operate supernaturally. And then lastly, you're going to have, a f you're going to see prosperity come like you've never had before. We've seen it happen over and over again. I think God's raising up a people like the tribe of Issachar who yes. knew the times and seasons, but furthermore, were able to operate within the times and seasons. It's not even just about knowing them. It's yes. actually about coming into agreement and alignment with what God is doing. And as a result, we see breakthrough. We see the blessing. We see acceleration. And yes. I believe your book, that word is such a resource for right now. Again, our encouragement is with accessing these ancient portals, it's about getting in step and in sync with the activity of God. And he is a God, truly, of times and seasons. Dr. Sharon Nesbitt, such a joy to have you on the program yes. today. Thank you so much for inviting us. We're so excited. My joy, my joy. And again, the book is accessing the ancient portals and that is going to be such a blessing to you it is available wherever books are sold and thank you so much for joining us today on the voice of destiny we will see you next time thank you so much